Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions for free. And some say the advice is worth what you pay for it. So join us. The phone number is 888-825-5225. We're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Kristen is with us in Pittsburgh to start off this hour. Hi, Kristen. How are you? I'm great, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I'm calling because um, my husband and I are both 55 years old. Um, we have a, um, a good income, um, primarily mine. Uh, we make over $300,000 a year, and we have for about the past um, 10 years, and um, successfully paid off our student loans in a 10-year period, over $125,000, only owe about $35,000 on our um, $400,000 home mortgage wow and um have no no revolving credit or debt we don't drive cars that we have car payments on we pay for those in cash um we don't you know we don't have any kind of debt in that way good for you our problem is that we don't um have a nest egg we're not saving and so looking down the road i want to be able to retire at some point and i'm just trying to come up with some options of how we should be um taking our money and, and investing it and potentially not just paying our children's student um, payments, you know, to colleges out of the cash that we have, maybe using it for something different. So you have some cash? We, we do. So I get, um, I get a nice bonus every year in March. How much cash do you have? Um, well, typically we have about seventy-five thousand dollars a year in in how about a typically cash right bonus. now. How much cash do you have? Oh, right this second, none because we just paid two college tuitions. <laughs> oh, so you got two in college? <laughs> we have two in college. One already graduated. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Good for you. All right. And so you're cash flowing college out of your three hundred k, but you have no debt except thirty-five thousand on your mortgage. Correct. Are you currently putting anything aside, 15%, 5%, anything into retirement? Yes. So I, we put in 10% um, in my 401k, and then we also do an additional 5% in a Roth IRA. Okay. So you're doing baby step four, 15% of your income going into retirement, right? Yes. How long have you been doing that? We've only been doing that since, um, well, the bigger chunk of it, we were doing about 8% up until two years ago. And now for the past two years, we're up to 15%. Okay. If you never get a raise for 10 years, you make 300000 and you put 15% of your income aside for retirement for a decade, you will be rich. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're doing everything exactly right. <laughs> okay. Now, and I mean, I guess we need to define rich. You won't be a billionaire, but you'll be a millionaire. <laughs> now, but okay. let's 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 play out though what you should be doing, which is more than that. Um, so, okay, you don't have any cash, but you have an emergency fund. Yes. How much is in it? Well, um, I would say that we are. It's just in our bank account, which it averages somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Just okay. in our bank account. Yeah. I would move that to a separate place. Let's move that to like a high yield savings account and get it out of the checking account so that it's clear this is money for three to six months of emergencies. Maybe put a little bit more with it. Yeah, it sounds a little low for three to six yeah. months. Okay. Yeah. And do you have any other non retirement investments? Um, we have property. We have two separate properties. Oh. And my husband is an um, is an antique car collector, mm-hmm. and so he uses. But you don't have any. You don't that. have any mutual funds or stocks no. or anything that are not in a retirement account. No. No other savings that you're leaving out here. No. Okay. Now the other property. So you've got properties that are cash flowing. Do they have debt on them? There's no debt on them, but they're not cash flowing. He uses them for his hobbyists. He's a hobbyist um, for his cars, so he uses them to house those. But oh, cool. potentially, we could turn around and sell our house. No. Yeah, you're good. You're full. Yeah. Yeah. I All mean, right. yeah. So you need thirty-five grand to knock the house out. As soon as you knock the house out, thirty-five grand. You got to mm-hmm. cover tuition. You knock the thirty-five thousand dollars out on the house. Then you're at what we mm-hmm. call baby step seven around here, meaning there's nothing okay. left to do but build wealth and be outrageously generous. 
Okay. So you'll finish mm-hmm. up college and then you're going to okay. have 300000 plus to invest. Then you would max out every 401k, every Roth IRA that you have available to you. And you're going to even do more investing because you're going to have money coming out your dead gum ears when you've got no college students and no house payment. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll be excited. <laughs> yeah, you get you get the little goobers off the payroll and you get the house paid off. The thing goes ding, ding, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's where you're going to be. When's the last one graduate? So our our youngest is a, a freshman in college. Okay, year. so three more years. Okay. Our daughter's a fourth year, so she'll be done next year. Yeah, and you just so wrote we'll, tuition we'll checks. Yeah, you just wrote. T- yeah, yeah, so you're, you know, you're 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 getting ready to be down to one, and then then three years from now you're done, and yeah. um, your house will be paid for by then, and so you're maxing yeah. out above whatever little bit of tuition you got, and then when tuition's all gone, three years from today you're fifty eight, and you're making three. 350 or whatever it is at that point and you start chunking away everything you can in any kind of retirement program to keep the stupid government's hands off of your money okay yes and then above that you start investing further in mutual funds and in other things that you if you buy any real estate you pay cash for it and the next real estate you buy needs to be income producing not hobbyist (laughs) <laughs> I will tell him. Yeah, no more toys until we get the house paid off and we got we got the retirement underway. Okay. Okay. I got a 1960 Corvette. I love toys. I'm not against toys. I'm not anti-toys. I'm anti-toys when your house isn't paid for. Okay, so paying off the house is, is big time. That should be easy. Yeah. Now in my in my that's why I was searching for cash. I, I wanted you to pay it off today. I had a feeling you had a little bit okay. of something under the couch cushion somewhere, and I couldn't find <laughs> well, it. it. I wasn't will there. in March. Okay. I will in March. Oh, how much so is that? Think that we should, um, probably about eighty thousand. Oh, good. Okay, pay off the house in March. Okay, good. <laughs> and then start chunking, and then crank up everything. See, if you'll run the math out in good growth stock mutual funds, averaging eleven percent, which is what the stock market's averaged since it started, in uh, in your four hundred one ks, in your Roth IRAs with matches where you can, you run the numbers out on that from fifty five, fifty six years old to sixty six, you're going to see an incredible number at the end of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're fine. That makes me feel better. You're fine. You, what what you do need is you need to be very precise in what your next steps are, because otherwise you'll buy another car, antique car. You are right. Yeah. I mean, we all we all have the antique car somewhere, and mm-hmm. uh, so it's a metaphor for buying crap out of order, you know, before we've got the other stuff done. You shouldn't be wringing your hands about retirement and have a barn full of cars. That's kind of, that, that's bass backwards. backwards, right? That's just wrong. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is Hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic, you can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Paolo is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey.
Thanks for joining us, America. We're so glad you are here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Well, one week. One week we'll be there. That's right. Be doing uh, the student loan live stream. How we got student loan debt. How we got here. How we get out. That's right. And you and uh, me and Rachel. Jade being the $280,000 example of having paid off student loans for that live stream. Uh, we'll be uh, doing that for free for you guys. It's September the 12th at 7 p.m. Central Time. You do have to tune in live. That's it. That's your shot. And it is free. Did we mention it's free? And it's probably worth more than that. 100%. It's probably worth we'll the balance you on your loans. We'll give double your money back <laughs> if you don't like it. Yeah. Can't beat that. Cut, they could cut our pay in half. If they don't like <laughs> it. So there you go. Anyway, we are, it, it's a, it's going to be a blast. We're going. There's so much solid information out there to give you hope in a time when it seems overwhelming, and you're standing at the bottom of Mount Everest looking up, and you do not see Joe Biden's face. So you know that you have to climb the mountain. You know it's got to be done. You know the government is not going to rescue you. Everyone has figured that out. Well, I say everyone. not everybody. Most everyone should have figured that out by now. We'll make sure they figure if it out. If you're slow to the party, <laughs> we'll get you there. But we're also going to show you, not leave you hopeless, but show you what to do and what people who have successfully done away with their student loans make you believe again mm -hmm. in yourself and in your ability to do this and give you some tools to knock it out as fast as possible. By the way, no magic answers. If I'm doing a live stream on barbecue, it's not going to involve microwaves. Microwave barbecue 100% of the time sucks. And money is like barbecue. It has to cook. Slow so roast if it. you think that you're going to get out, you got in a $100,000 worth of student loan debt. It was easy to get in. It's not going to be easy to get out, but we can get you out. That's right. You just got to be willing to cook for a while. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so RamseySolutions.com slash student loans one week from today, September the 12th, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. Completely free. You need to sign up, though, ahead of time for the live stream, and we'll send you the link, and you'll be able to turn it on, pop it on your television, sit there and watch it, pop it on your computer screen, even on your little phone, and you mm -hmm. can watch it, and we'll do it just for you. Because, hey, we we're, you know we poke fun all the time, but we also know it's scary, and it's um, overwhelming. It is. It's overwhelming. I hear from people all the time on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, and they don't know what to do. And I tell them, I'm like, look, we're doing this live stream. It's practical answers. Yeah. You'll be able to walk away from it, use the tools, and do something that day to better your situation. So, But if you come looking for a magic wand, spoiler alert, we don't have any. It doesn't exist. But we will tell you what millions of people who have been successful in getting rid of their student loans have done, and we'll show you exactly how to do it. Oh, and tell your uh, friend who's um, still living on denial. Uh, on the, oh, on the denial. river bank on, on the, the river bank denial river denial yeah all right michael is in uh atlanta georgia hey michael welcome to the ramsey show hey guys thanks so much for having me uh quick quick little synopsis of our situation so my wife and i uh, i'm 29 and she's 25 uh, i run a small video company so it's just myself and then we've got two uh like 1099 contractors that work for us um we do about 300 and top line, about 175 take home. Uh, but we started listening to the YouTube clips about six months ago. Um, and then I should have started sooner. I should have listened to my wife sooner. And she was like, hey, we need to go full bore. Like, no debt on anything. We need to just do the full day plan. I was like, you're right. Let's do it. So we've got no debt on anything except a rental property that was our first house that we kept. Uh, we've got no debt in our business. All the cars are paid for, no credit cards, anything like that. Way to go, Michael. But our question Thank you so much. Um, so the, uh, the my, I guess my question is, so we, we bought our townhouse in 2020, right before the world went crazy. Mm -hmm. um, for 217, it's probably worth 340 now. Um, and then we moved when we found out she was pregnant and wanted some more space and less stairs with the dog and all that stuff. Um, and so we have our current residence that we owe about 330 on. It's worth about 450. Um, but my question is, do we? Should we just go full bore, sell the townhouse? We've probably got 140000 in equity in it, and I've got about 150 in mutual funds that I could pull out um, that's not retirement. Uh, should we just go full bore? And you could pay off your house. That's what I'm saying. But, you know, I, I, but I also say, you know, that, that townhouse, our rental property, 
you know, produces its rents for seventeen fifty. We could probably get a little, little more for it. We're in North Atlanta in a great area. So, mm-hmm. you know, do we should we pay the townhouse off or should we just go full bore and get the house knocked out before I'm even 30? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, one way I make some of these decisions, and if you've been binging YouTube, you probably heard this before, is I reverse engineer it. Sure. Let's pretend you did not have money in a mutual fund and you did not have a rental property and you were sitting in a paid-for $450,000 house. And you woke up this morning and said, I'm going to go borrow $330,000 on my home in order to buy a rental property and put 150000 in mutual funds. Would you do that? I don't know that I would. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, that, what that does is, is it makes you also think with your heart where you measure risk. Because when, I, when you say that, you go, wait a minute, I have paid for home. And for just a moment there, you were sitting in the you know, out on the patio with a cool cup, with a great cup of coffee and on that paid for house. And for just a moment it was paid for. And then I took it away from you. Your stomach Mm. jumped up into your throat a little bit, even though it's not really paid for. It was just a discussion, but it Mm -hmm. still causes a physical reaction. Doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, that's risk. Too, once we had our daughter, that's risk. I, I was much more risk averse before our daughter came here. I was like, oh, no, we'll go for it. We'll do all these different things. I want to, I'll do 10 rentals. Like, we're right. just going to get after it. Yeah. And now I'm like, I don't know how it feels about that. Yeah. Now, so you're, now you're the antithesis of TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> you, you know, you grew your brain in. It's good. Having kids does <laughs> that. Having kids will do that for you. I, I, yeah, I would, well, I'm, I'm, I'm saying all of that to say I personally would sell it and pay it off and be debt free because I am, I'm the end of the story. Okay. You're, you're 31 or no, you're not even 30. You were doing this before you're 30, right? Yes, sir. I'm 29. Yeah, I'm 63. So I did it when I was your age and now I've got a whole bunch of real estate and it's all paid for. I paid cash for it as I bought it. And it really does cash flow when you don't have payments on, dude. <laughs> yeah, my, like a my bandit with a gun. A cash flow is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. So, yeah. I mean, you, so the end of the story is it's not that you will be without real estate as an investment. The end of the story is, is you've learned that real estate's a great investment. You've also learned debt free is cool and the shortest path to wealth. And so I predict that when you're 40, you'll own several pieces of real estate that you paid cash for Mm -hmm. that make you a lot of money. Love it. Yeah. There it is. I love that. I love that reverse engineer because it helps you see what you truly value in a moment. No, that, that's a, that's a good way of saying it, you know, and you can do that folks with anything. I mean, if you've got a boat sitting in the driveway, you can go, uh, if I had that, if I had that $14,000, in or forty thousand dollars or whatever that boat is, right? In a pile in the middle of the table, would I go buy a boat? And you go, yeah, I use the stinking thing every weekend. Yes, I'd go buy that boat. Then you keep the boat, right? <laughs> That's right. You keep the boat. I got two boats and two jet skis, and I was down there this weekend at the lake house. And um, you know, I I'm not selling those. Mm-hmm. No, not happening. Uh, they're not for sale. Yeah. And uh, you know, I got two Mastercrafts, the best ski boat in the world, and I got the opportunity to buy one finally when I got some stinking money. But yeah, um, you know, it was that. So, so no, I'm not selling that boat, but you, yeah. you can reverse engineer and decide to keep it. Yeah, that's right. That's a good mental exercise to go through, though. Yeah, with almost anything. So, yeah, mm-hmm. very good. Michael, I would do that, but only on the caveat that you play all the way through and become rich and pay cash for your real estate. So I want you to join the Baby Steps Millionaires League, and you're not far away, and you're not even 30. And then, you know, then you start saving up and paying cash for stuff. The weird thing is, it's a reverse debt snowball. In like when you buy your first rental property Uh with no with no debt, you make a lot of money on every Mm -hmm. month because you know what I mean. There's no ex. You got expenses, but you got no payments. Yeah, no payments. And so you got money in the account every stinking month Mm -hmm. stacking, and then you use that money pretty quick buy another one. Mm -hmm. Now you got two of them stacking. That's the type of snowball I like. (laughs) Then you got four of them stacking, and I just buy real estate from my real estate. Yeah. That's, I don't even touch my regular income to yeah. buy real estate now. It's just an income snowball. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. One. I like that too. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. 
Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. By the way, you ought to come by and visit us. We've usually got 50 to 200 folks sitting and watching us do the show. We do it from 1 to 4 Central Time every weekday afternoon. And uh, we'd love to have you come out and hang out with us. The lobby's, of course, free. There's all kinds of Ramsey things to do around here, including free coffee and free homemade chocolate chip cookies. And you get to watch from the debt-free stage, some debt-free screams. Isaiah is here to do just that. Hey, Isaiah, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Better than I deserve. Where do you live, sir? (laughs) I live in Tampa, Florida. Awesome. Very cool. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off, sir? $176,000. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. How long did this take? Uh, It took me six years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? I began at $41,000, and I ended up at around $95,000. Wow. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you do for a living? I'm an IT guy, and for my side gig, I'm on the radio. I knew it. I thought you have a great radio voice. That's so funny. Sorry, that was an outburst. Oh, it's all good. (laughs) You do. So what are you doing radio? Uh, Producing shows from fishing shows, sports shows, Mm -hmm. any type of thing. They want me. I'm here. Let's go. Let's have some fun. And get to do some voice work in the middle of it. I do, yes. Very good. Good for you. Very fun. What kind of debt was the 176? It was just a mortgage. You paid off your house. Yep, that was it. Look at it, weird people. Game on, man. Yes. Way to go. It wasn't anything related to, you know, mortgages, credit card debt. No, I already had that done and Mm -hmm. gone out of the door. Yeah. Wow. Just a mortgage. Just a mortgage. Six years ago, you get on this journey making 41,000 and you end up paying off your home and everything, making 95 in the end of the story. How old are you? I am 34. What's the house, wow. what's the house worth? Uh, now it's worth almost $450,000 now. Way to go, so. man. And how much is in your retirement accounts? Uh, I wish it was a little bit more. It's around 150000 Good for right. you, We're though. We're going. Man, you're killing it. Wow. You're 600 already, and you're $600,000 net worth, and you're only 30, man. That's yep. just great. I got to awesome. keep going. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> on your way. You'll be baby step millionaire in no time. Uh, excellent, excellent. Okay, so what happened six years ago that put you on this Ramsey journey? So what happened was that I was getting my mortgages, and I was just paying the minimum, and I was looking at the interest, and it was just a couple of pennies every time that was going less. And I'm yep. like, just a couple of pennies, that's it? So I was like, you know what? Let me do something. Let me research something. And I was recently single, too, at the time. And I was going on Facebook, and I was like, dating group. I was scrolling around, and I found something for Dave Ramsey dating group. I was like, who's Dave Ramsey, and, <laughs> and what's who's his he dating, dating group? Yeah. So I, I began to do some research, and I was like, oh, a finance guru. Let me actually jump in a little bit. Let me talk to these cool cats. They were talking about baby steps, and I was like, what is baby steps? So I began to do more research. I was like, oh, okay, so right now I'm on BS6. How can I do BS7? So I was thinking of going to gazelle mode. Which mm-hmm. I, which, so. yep. And then I was like, okay, let's go gazelle. Let's do what we need to do to get that to be zero. There you go. So, Very cool. Way to that go, was man. it. Yeah, it was fun. It was exciting. It so, really was. So who was on your side during all this? You you decide that you're going like animal mode, going gazelle mode uh, on yes. this mortgage. Were there people around you who were like, dude, you're 34. Like you can just, you've got time. Nope. Or was there somebody who was like, come on, dude, just you got me. this. You, you need to have ambition. You need to have the passion. It's just because of what I saw with my, with my family. I saw my mom. She was one of those 1980s, you know, oh, credit card. Let me swipe yeah. it and forget it type yeah. of thing. And then it took her around 25 years to pay that off. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to be like that. Let me do something different. And you just have to be self-motivated because- being debt free is great. Yeah, way to go, man. So the the odd 
pop-up site that we have by the way disclaimer we have <laughs> nothing to do with any dating sites <laughs> nothing well, not nothing Dave, not a zero <laughs> yeah full disclaimer here and yes it's been proposed as many times as a bean <laughs> beans and rice cookbook so don't send me the proposal okay we're not doing it why not oh man i'm just glad you i'm glad you wandered in the back door man it's just amazing yeah <laughs> just well, very cool the dating group had some cool cats in it and you know i i had a lot of fun and we all helped each other out yeah and to resolving to become everyone being debt free. I love so it. Really awesome. nice. Very good. Wow. Good for you, man. Well done. How's it feel to not have a house payment at 34 years old? I, I don't. I, I don't know what to do with my money except <laughs> let's reinvest it. Let's let's put it up in my 401k. Let's max it out. That's wow. awesome. Good for you. That's really cool. Good are you, you are you doing anything to celebrate? Are you going anywhere? Yes. What's the big trip? What's actually, the... I had a uh, big party uh, a few weeks ago, actually, over at my house. I invited my friends. It was like a double party because not only did I become debt-free, but I also got, uh, I finished off in my second bachelor's degree. Sweet. Oh, wow. Because with my job, they do free education. Always max out those benefits. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did and got myself a second bachelor's and I'm going for my master's and I'm looking for my doctorate. Let's go wow yeah. why not game on yeah yeah I hey, like if it. you don't have to pay let's go this is Options. very there's nothing wrong with this no well done sir thank well you done well done okay so when the guys at the party they said okay you're 34 years old you have paid for a four hundred fifty thousand dollar house this is weird how did you <laughs> do that what do you tell them the key is to getting out of debt the key is be self-motivated is to have passion within yourself because if you don't have that passion you're not going to do it and don't listen to most of that media saying that debt's cool that's, that's not right. cool you know you got to pay off the debt you got to get yourself debt free and it's like change it's like it's like being uncuffed from being in prison or something you know you're free you can do whatever you want and it's and it's fun and it's a cool journey from going from different baby steps and whatnot and i try to encourage my friends to do the same thing and live that ramsey lifestyle Wow. And some of them will do it. Some of them won't. That'll Mm -hmm. be perfect. Well, very good, man. Congratulations. Proud of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're excited for you. Well done. And appreciate you taking the trip here to Nashville to do your debt-free scream. We've got the uh, Live and Give box for you, for you to have the uh, Baby Steps Millionaire's book, which is definitely the journey that you're on. You won't be there for very, won't be long until you're there. And Total Money Makeover book to give to somebody and get them started. And even Financial Peace University membership, all of that. Uh, Just to say thanks for coming up here. And you can live some of it and you can give some of it. So it's perfect. Sounds great. Very cool. Very cool. Who did you bring along to cheer you on here? Uh, my friend Jocelyn. She, too, is on the Dave Ramsey journey, Baby Steps, right, right. now. So good. she wants to see what awesome. the good life is like. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Find out what it's like to be truly weird. Well done, Isaiah. You've Thank joined you. the club, my man. I'm proud of you. All right. Isaiah from Tampa, Florida. $176,000 paid off in six years, making forty one to 95000 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Uh, three, two, one. I'm debt-free. Yeah. yeah. That is how it's done. Yes, 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 yes. Man, his enthusiasm was contagious, infectious. You know, the first time I took a call or somebody on the debt-free stage that had paid off their home, I was aghast. Mm -hmm. And then the first time I had somebody that was like 40 years old pay off their home, I was aghast. And now it seems like every week we've got a 30-something in here with their homes paid off. I know. And are almost millionaires already. Uh, it's like happening earlier and earlier mm-hmm. and earlier. This younger generation is catching on faster than the boomers did. That's true. Yes, they are. I'm. Yes, aghast is the word. Yeah, it just, it. I mean, it, it's, wow, wonderful. Not a payment in the world, and he's... Not even 35 years old. Yeah. And, and light as a <laughs> feather. Light as a feather. I mean, light just, you know, feather. not touching the ground when he walks. I yep. mean, that's, this Floating. is how it works. You know, it's, it, because you don't have to carry all those chains around. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it changes how you work. It changes where you work. It changes the quality of your relationships. Uh-huh. Your, uh-huh. your ability to set boundaries in toxic areas of your life when you have no money problems is pretty powerful. Yeah. And awesome. uh, he, he didn't have that in his story that we know of anyway. But just to let you know, if you don't have any payments and the ball starts yelling, you can just start walking off. Yeah, I'm leaving. Where are you going? I don't have any payments. <laughs> 
I'm not putting up with this crap. Next. I mean, it changes everything, boys and girls. changes how you walk. And uh, because you're not, you don't walk like a slave anymore. You walk like a free person. It changes. It's worth it. It's hard, but it changes everything. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. Aston is with us, and uh, Ashton is with us. Aston, I'm sorry, is with us in Akron, Ohio. Hi, Aston, how are you? Hello, I'm good, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. Sure, how can we help? So, I, since I have met you through the interwebs, I have referred to you as my financial father. Um, prior to discovering um, all the Ramsey products, I didn't know anything about how to handle money. Uh, that was never discussed growing up, and neither did my husband. Um, but with all the time we had on our hands staying home at the beginning of the COVID crisis, um, we found you again, and we signed up for... Financial Peace University. We dedicated every Sunday to go join the class online. We went through it. Uh, that was February 2020. Since then, we've paid off 160000 Woohoo! Way to go. Yes. So my next call will be a debt-free, uh, debt-free screen, and hopefully we can do it in person. But um, that's uh, hopefully soon. But we have our house left, of course, and about 45000 in debt. Uh, left to pay off aside from the mortgage and really I'm looking for advice or some kind of push on how to gain some traction we kind of feel like we're stuck I don't know if it's been the change in just all the changes with the world today and the prices of things we also have my mom living with us since March so that's changed some things financially um, and covering her expenses um but I feel like this last 45000 is it just feels like forever. It's not like it's not going anywhere. <laughs> is it because your margin has dramatically decreased or is it just you're getting tired of chucking the money towards the debts every month? I don't think we're getting tired. I, I know that we're still pretty excited because I mean, we, we do still have our meetings, my husband and I. We do them every other week mm-hmm. uh, where we're sitting down and looking at our budget and our spreadsheet of all the things. And um, we see how it's working. It's just for some reason this 45 and then how our budget has had to change. I feel so like you don't have as much money with- going towards it? Oh, no, we do have money going towards it. You have as um, much as you used as, to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay. How much? Let's stop I, a second. What, what's your household income? Okay. 
Um, bring home is one forty three six. Okay, and how much are you? How quick do you think you're going to have the forty five done? What's your projection? I'm hoping to have it. No, no, done no. You got numbers. Next... It's not hope. What do the numbers tell you? Months. What? Sixteen months. Sixteen months. One yes. six. For forty five thousand, making one hundred and forty five thousand. So you can't live on a hundred. Yes. What's that? You can't live on a hundred for the next year. Uh, we can. We're we're also paying. Um, well, like we have my mom living with us too, so all of her. Expenses. How old is your mom? But you know, just <laughs> sixty six. Okay, you you started. You're muffled, like you cover your phone or something. Oh, um, sorry, sixty six. Sixty six. Okay. Yeah. And why why is she living with you? Uh, she had to move out from her home due to some domestic violence. Mm. Okay, so there's a divorce in process? Uh, no, no divorce involved. No, the, she wasn't married at the time, no. So she didn't own the home? No. So it wasn't, was her, it wasn't her home? No, she was renting. Is okay. she able to work at all? She does work some, yes. Okay. Does she take Social Security? Not yet, no. Because does she of the contribute to your household at all? She does when she can. She has a lot of uh, medical bills of her own from from that uh, attack, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, so she's covering those bills. Um, at the time, she didn't have insurance because mm-hmm. she got, you know, hit with all the bills. So yeah. trying to help her where we can. Um, so like the grocery bills, all that has adjusted. Um, How many kids do you have? Just, we have three kids. Okay, so <laughs> mom's in the house. She, I, I, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Mom's in the house, so now you're buying a little bit of extra food. There's maybe a little increase in water, electricity, that sort of thing. Yes, shouldn't that, be, that, should, that's not that's not changing. Yeah, that, that doesn't that feel anymore. like the reason that this is slowed down. My question to you, I, I asked it a couple of times, and I felt like you were kind of going back and forth. I think that okay. you're just. Um, One of two things is happening. Either you're not putting as much money to the debt and therefore it's not moving, which it sounded like Mm -hmm. you said initially, but then you said, no, we're putting just as much on it. So no, you paid off 160,000, right? Yes. Yes. In what period of time? Three years. Uh, From February, 2020 to, well, August. So almost three years. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. I think... Based that's, on what you're telling us, I that's think that's fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Yes. Okay, that's not forty-five thousand over sixteen months. So your energy has slowed down. You're not putting as much towards the debt as you were. Yeah. That's what we were saying. You should be done with this in like twelve, eight to twelve months, somewhere in there. If you turn it back up, I think. Um, I don't know. I, I'll give you a guess. You, you, the way you mentioned mom, and then you tell us what has happened with your mom, the trauma she's been through, and how um, the emotions around some dirtbag hitting your mother to the point that she needs medical attention are very strong. Mm-hmm. If you're yeah. a redneck, it means you want to kill somebody, okay? Like yeah. him. <laughs> Okay, not saying you should. I just said it makes you want to because that's actually what he deserves. Okay, so uh, Mm -hmm. but the uh, so the emotions around that. So not only did mom come in and is eating a little bit of food, what mom did come in and do was use up a whole lot of your emotional bandwidth right now. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Which is okay because you're supposed to take care of her because she got the crud beat out of her. That's horrible. Right. I mean, I'm so yeah, glad yeah. you're there for her, but I think you're, you you know, you guys had a singular purpose in life coming out of the Fauci quarantine. Your singular <laughs> yeah. purpose in life was get out of debt, wasn't it? Yeah. And now you've got like two or three purposes, and so it's it's diluting some of your emotional focus and energy. Uh, at least one of the purposes is valid, but just recognizing that it's there helps you deal with it. And that is, I'm probably slowing down just because I'm, you know, mom's situation is taking up some part of my emotional bandwidth. I think she's hitting you all harder there than she is in the pocketbook. 
I would probably agree with you. Yeah, and I, and again, I, I want to validate that. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's probably the right thing to do. She needs you to be there. She needs to remember she's not a victim, that, or she is a victim, but she's not a worthy of what happened to her because that's what goes, the shame that goes with domestic violence. So helping her turn the corner on this and getting her to where she can contribute to your household financially would be good for her dignity in this as well. So that'd be okay if she started either getting a job or collecting Social Security, I don't care which, and dumping that in the middle of your all's table to help uh, cover the, mm-hmm. the you know food and housing right now. That's good. And and then we also need to work out a long-term plan, which is not her living here for 25 years mm-hmm. um, until she's 94. We're not doing that. So we gotta we need a better plan than that. But short term, you, you've been a safety net and you should. Yeah, I think there I think you're right, Dave. I think you hit on something with the emotional part because I think that's what you, people tend to do when something emotional happens. Every it's like you go out to dinner more, you're tired, you don't cook it as much at home. Yep. You she yep. doesn't probably doesn't want to say no to much of what her mom is requesting. Yep. Like there's all of these things that make you feel like, how can I help? How can I just decompress from this moment? And unfortunately, sometimes that includes spending dollars. Yeah, and, and I think that's what's happened here. You relax. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you relax, money flows to stupid. Sure does. And I'm not saying you're doing a bunch of stupid at all. I, I don't think you are. But there, there's singular focus is what got you 160 done yeah. in two and a half years. And singular, more singular focus to the extent you can and still take care of your mom is what will get you moving again, kiddo. You're doing better than it feels like you're doing, I think. I think so, too. And I think you're an amazing daughter. Well done. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Mike is with us in Wilmington, North Carolina. Hey, Mike, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I have uh, my wife and I have been talking. We're considering selling our home. Um, of course, the prices on, on the houses just skyrocketed. And uh, so we could put a lot of money in our pockets. So right now we owe approximately... Two hundred and forty-three thousand uh, dollars. That's a mortgage and a HELOC. Um, and our total debt is two, little over two hundred and ninety-nine in uh, credit card. Um, we got five thousand, little over five thousand, five thousand one hundred left on a car, and a personal loan from a family member from a few years back of like twenty-six five. Uh, so we're paying on all of that every month. So total debt, a little over 299, 243 of it is the house. Um, we talked about possibly selling the house because after selling the house, um, uh, paying the fees and closing and mortgage payoff, HELOC and everything, uh, and then paying off all of our debt, uh, could be completely debt free. We would have approximately two hundred and seven thousand dollars in cash. Uh, we could set aside you know thirty thousand dollars for emergency fund for six months, and still have a, a pretty good lump sum that we could put away somewhere for a year until we decide what we want to do and and well, find much, another house for a year or two. How how much do you make? What's your income? Uh, my income, ain't, uh, 
annually, I'll say monthly is eleven thousand five hundred, but that's not every month. My I work for a utility company, and so spring and fall I make a little more. Uh, other times it's straight forty hours a week. Mm-hmm. Your work, so does your wife work outside basis, the home? It averages out. Excuse me. Does your wife work outside the home? She does not. Okay, so, so your household income is around one hundred and thirty, right? Yeah, 130, 135. And yeah. you got about $50,000 of non mortgage debt. Do you not like your house? Uh, I do like the house. Uh, it's in a nice location and convenient to everything. And, Does your wife like uh, it? We got the house at a good deal. Yeah, she likes it. We, we fixed it up the way we wanted it because it needed a total remodel. And I have, um, I have a theory. I, mean, I have a theory. Can I tell you my that? theory? Yes, ma'am. I think that you're kind of. Um, trying to get around what it might take to pay off $57,000 of debt. And I think in your mind, the easiest route is because in real estate markets up, we can sell our house, we can get this money, we can knock all these things out quickly. But I'm not sure that that's going to be the solution to your problem. We can knock out the HELOC, we can lock out, knock out this personal loan, knock out this car, save up our money. It's kind of like a quick fix. But I'm looking at your income and I'm like, wow, if you love the house, you fixed it up the way that you want. Why not just walk through the process of budgeting, cutting down your lifestyle to nothing, sacrificing and just paying off this $57,000 of debt with intensity. Then you'll walk through the process of saving up three to six months of expenses. Make 135, put 30 a year on it for two years. You're done. You're done. And you get to keep the house that you've made exactly the way you want it. And here's the side benefit of that. You will have fixed the guy and the gal that caused this mess in the first place because they will have learned to quit using the stupid butt credit cards or borrowing to buy a car and for God's sakes won't be borrowing from family ever again. Because, I mean, if you'd learn to live on less than you make dramatically to pay off debt, it changes the person in your mirror, mm-hmm. which which is your long-term sustainable fix. The house thing doesn't change the person in your mirror. And you if you don't change your habits, even after selling the house, you'll be back in debt in five years. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to you? Yeah, it, it, it does. There was, there was some little background behind that. My, my wife and I actually divorced little over a year ago. We were separated three and a half years ago. We divorced a little over a year ago. Um, we both came to a re- realization and 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 that we're better together. I, I went to a Christmas play last year and it said, there's nothing too broken or too far gone that God can't fix. Amen. And and we... God healed your marriage and you're back and, together? And got back together. Wow. And, yeah. Very cool. Yes. That is very cool. That is awesome. Yes. How does that, that, that's a beautiful story. How does that uh, keep you, it would seem to me like that in, in, equips you to do hard things together. Mm-hmm. It does, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, instead and, of, and, yeah. And she, I, I, so let me ask you this. Let me, in, in that context, I, I, maybe we keep trying to read your mind. That's not fair. But um, in that context, are you just trying to do something nice for her? Get rid of this stress? Without well, her having actually, to feel I it, think the stress is more. The stress is more on me because I am the one that works outside the home, and I see. Yeah, but you you, you know, want to clean this mess up without causing this lady that God gave back to you any inconvenience. Either that, or this debt yes, represents and, and, uh, the past. And I want to be able to have this money set aside to basically so we can start leaving. I'm, I'm I'll be fifty eight years old and. And, um, yeah, I want you to take two November, years and when you're 60, and, you're debt free, except your house. That's what I would tell you. To yeah, do. I mean, and we already, but when we divorced, we never split up anything. So That's everything okay. is still in both of our names. I still good. have the IRA good. with three rental properties in it that's paying income into the IRA. Hey, Mike. We're worth over uh, like 1.2 million. Even, even more reason to pay this off in less than two years. Even more reason. Now, go ahead and drop a three rental property uh, bomb on me at the end of the call, and I don't know what to do with that. Okay, so, except it's in an IRA, so you can't touch it, so we'll just keep moving. But, uh, yeah, if I was in your shoes, 
I would grab her by the hand and say, honey, we just finished one hard thing. Let's do one more hard thing. And let's roll up our sleeves and live on nothing for the next 18 to 24 months and be 100% debt-free except our house. Get rid of the family loan. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh Whoa. Has anybody ever said family loan and it made you feel all warm and fuzzy? Not. (laughs) Gives you the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, just. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, wow. That's not good. Just lost two more hairs. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Got to go through the process, Dave. That's what I would do, man. And hang on. We'll sign you guys up for Financial Peace University. We'll be uh, part of the next chapter of your marriage growing and healing and show you guys how to work this stuff together. Uh, it will work. And I, I personally, if you, unless you hate the house, I would definitely not sell it. I would fix the guy in my mirror and get this overspending down and cause it to be underspending and use it to get out of debt. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. from Friday and Saturday, we'll be in Chicago doing a smart conference. If you want to be smarter, we'd love to have you. We'll actually be up north of Chicago, up at Willow Creek Church. That's the venue that we're using. They're letting us come there and do our smart conference on Friday night and all day Saturday. We'd love to have you if you're in the Chicago land area. Jade will be there speaking. George Camel. Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman. We're going to be talking about every area of your life. It is a wonderfully entertaining Friday night and all day Saturday. You will leave inspired and informed and smarter. That's right. What are you going to be talking on this year? I'm going to be talking about reclaiming your freedom from Ah, debt. There you go. Okay. Which is what you did. That's right. Exactly. Smart Conference Chicago. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. You can still get a ticket, I think. So check it out. I think you can still get in. We'd love to have you make a plan. Jill is with us in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Jill. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Oh, hi, guys. It's a real honor to talk to you. Um, I need your math skills, Dave. I have a 17, uh, sorry, 18-year-old uh, granddaughter who's in her last year of high school and wants to go to college. And I just found out that her father is refusing to pay any college fees for her, and I'm devastated. So I want to set up an account, possibly in a mutual fund, uh, for her. I don't have a lot of time. I have about a year to graduate next spring and then go to college a year or so. And I was wondering what kind of mutual fund I could put it into to gain the most, um, uh, whatever. Not not enough to fix this. Mm Mm-hmm. No. How much no. would I have to invest? I have some money, okay. but I, I don't, stop, I'm older stop, and I don't want to take second. it out. Let's stop a second. 17-year-old okay. She's grand, she just step 18. granddaughter. Yes, but I raised her. You, you, you raised her? Yes, from the time. Her parents weren't married, and um, my husband and I did a lot of babysitting and, and practically raised her and helped them out tremendously. And so I don't regret helping her out. I love her. I wasn't questioning that. I was just trying to get understand what's going on here. And oh, okay. so uh, well, you, you've you've been in the family for 20 years. Oh, more than that. Yeah, but since she was born, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um so the stepson doesn't want to help or just can't help her dad. He's he's got a lot of problems. He's a narcissist. <clears throat> My husband passed away 3 years ago. That was his father and left him some money and he's blown off he's blown through it. He has no money left, and he's had another child, and he's not married. So trying to get help from him is not going to probably work. Mm, okay. 
So this is so not a complete I family a unit that you're interfering in, more like a splintered family unit, and you've been the one holding it together, you and your husband, well, before he passed. Right, uh, exactly. My um, the, the, the mother of my daughter, of my granddaughter, I've been in touch with her. She okay. and I are fine. How much and, can you devote to her college? Well, I have quite a bit of money put away for my old age, and I'm hesitant. What's to take quite a bit? Much. I have about a million one. Okay, that's good. Well done. Okay. Yeah. So, well, how I, much I do you want to, to devote <laughs> to her college? Well, that's what I kind of needed to help you help me with. I am. Um, okay, let's sure. pretend that we didn't try to invest our way out of this in one year, which is okay. called called desperation and sets you up for a get rich quick or get get scammed or something. We're not going to mm-hmm. do that. Let's just try to get a no. plan together and pay for this kid's college. All right. Okay. So the average in-state tuition, what state does the child live in? She lives in California. She is talking about going out of state, uh, but I'm not sure where yet. She doesn't know yet. Uh, She's I, at I, above I, average grade. Yeah. At the okay, very least, so we can start can, with. Can she move to you? Can she move in with you? Well, I'm going to be there in a couple of weeks and talk to her, yes. And I was going to ask her if she wanted to entertain that. Yeah, I want, her, I want her to have Texas uh, residents. And you need to find out okay. what that means for the University of Texas at Dallas. Okay. Because not it's not a bad school at all. And no, Texas, no, not at all. Yeah. Mm-mm. And um, not Austin. I'm talking Dallas. She okay. can live with you and go to there and get a great education. Yeah, that was in the back of my mind. And like I said, I'm going to talk to her and her mom in a couple of weeks. Okay, so here, here's, the, here's the thing. School choice is 90% of the problem with student loan debt. Yes. People pay stupid prices to go to stupid schools and study stupid things, and they get stupid. Okay? Yeah. So let's I've don't be stupid about education. Yeah. We're, this this uh-huh. is a kid from a splintered situation. Her step-grandmother, for God's sakes, her fairy godmother, is stepping in to fix this. Guess what? You're going to use that muscle to force her to make good choices for her own good. Good choices is reasonable college tuition. Out-of-state tuition, by definition, is not reasonable in this situation. Okay. You are paying for nothing except you crossed a state line. It has absolutely yeah. zero value. Zero. Mm-hmm. One of my kids applied. We live in Tennessee. When they were at college age, applied for and was accepted to the University of Mississippi which is a wonderful little SEC school. No problem with it at all. Only it's three times the price of the University of Tennessee because it's across a state line. Right. So instead of today's world, instead of uh, 25000 you pay 8000 to go in-state to basically the same school, just a different okay. color on the football jersey, okay? Well, yeah. and some yeah. play better football than others. But anyway, but yeah. aside from that, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, the number of people that uh, have applied at Ramsey, we have 1,100 folks working here, that we did not hire because they went to the University of Texas at Dallas versus the University of uh, Timbuktu across the state line is precisely zero. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, we count it towards your wisdom and count it towards a badge of honor to get hired if you used some dadgum sense while getting your degree. Does right. that make sense? Right. So yes, this is what you put your little arm funny. around her little neck and explain mm-hmm. life to her. Granny's going to okay. pay for this, but you're going to do it Granny's way. Mm-hmm. And okay. then you can get through this for she can go to community college for two years if she wants to. We'd probably pay nothing, get her get her yeah. requirements out of the way, her core stuff out of the way, and you can get through this for under fifty grand. Well, that would be great. That would it, be no, terrific. it's not great. It's factual. Yeah. But for me, it would be okay. Yeah, yeah, you can handle fifty mm-hmm. grand out of one point one, and you would. Right. You do that in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. But a- am I going to spend a hundred and fifty k for her to get basically the same education through a series of stupid butt choices at other places? No, no, no. She does not mm-hmm. need a lazy river. <laughs> Some yeah, of these stupid butt schools have a lazy river you can ride through in an inner tube. Yeah, uh-huh. this is how stupid I, I think- butt this stuff has gotten. She just is uneducated regarding this, and I'm going to have to educate her. Well, these are the, let me tell you, 
in our stuff that we've studied, and Jade, we've talked about this a lot, um, Anthony O'Neill, that was a Ramsey personality, African-American guy for a long time, we kept he kept saying it was African-Americans that were running up uh, student loan debt uh, uniquely in ridiculous degrees. And I said, no, that's not it. I don't buy that. And so we got to digging into it, and he and I were, were digging into the research, and what we found was just exactly what you described. It has nothing to do with skin color. It has to do with first generation to go to college. Yeah. Whether mm-hmm. you're, you know, whether you're a hillbilly like me or African American, first generation <laughs> to go to college doesn't have college educated parents to guide them through the stupidity of higher education. That's true. And so they mm-hmm. end up spending two hundred fifty thousand dollars getting a degree, a master's degree in sociology, so they can work at the state making thirty eight thousand as a caseworker, which is dumber than yeah. crap. I've listened to you guys a long time talking about this, and it really upset me when I first heard that she was going to take out student debt. So no, she's not. Um, she's got a grandmother who's not well, going to let her. Yeah. I'm I'll take care her. of you, but you're going to do it my way. No debt. Mm-hmm. We're going to choose a school that is reputable and a good, solid education. Okay. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can do this. You're a good lady. I will. Yeah. I will. Take, Thank take you. control will. for her sake. Take control okay. of it. Don't don't be acquiescing to seventeen year olds' wishes. <laughs> that you're not you know she don't even though I'm your fairy godmother, you get no wishes. This oh that's a line. <laughs> this is the Ramsey show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by a hundred if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washall, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the Dead Free Stage. Tim and Karen are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, good. We're great. Welcome. Where do you live? We live in Detroit, Michigan. Ah, huh, cool. Welcome to Nashville. Good to have you guys. And all the way here to do a debt free yes. scream. Yeah. How much have you paid off? 80000 All right. How long did that take? About five years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, I think we were at 36000 and then now we're at 88000 Good. Good for you. Well done. What do you all do for a living? Um, I'm an apprentice for for uh, uh, for, an ele- uh, for an electrical company. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, in, I'm in finance. Okay, great. Great. Very cool. What kind of debt was the $80,000? Uh, school debt, um, a lot of it, and then uh, credit cards and car payments. Mm-hmm. Very good. Good for you guys. Good. Way to go, man. Woo-hoo. I'm proud of y'all. <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. All right. So you paid off everything but the house. Well, we don't have a house yet. You we're don't have still, a house. Okay, no. so you're renting. You're yes. 100% debt-free right now. Yes. yes. Way to go. Very good. Five years, starting out making 36000 bucks. How long y'all been married? 25 years uh, th- this year. So that, that's kind of why we came to Nashville to, to see you, but also celebrate 25 years of marriage. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So at 20 year mark, you're in debt 80 grand. Mm-hmm. This sucks. Yeah, we did stupid. 
and you're going, uh, I don't like this. Mm -mm. So whose idea was it to make this change, and how did you guys do this, and how did you connect to Ramsey? Uh, Well, I'll let my wife explain that. Well, uh, we first heard about Dave Ramsey. um, From your parents. About 23 years ago uh, from my family, Uh but we thought you were a pyramid scheme. Ah, okay. And no. <laughs> we no, we only sell snake oil. Though. <laughs> yeah. And then um, fast forward to about seven, I believe seven years ago, I was talking to a friend, and um, uh, shout out to Helen and Charlie. Um, we were talking, and she was talking about she read your book, mm-hmm. and um, she was talking about how they were going to get out of debt and they were going to become millionaires, and I was like. What you joined the, the pyramid scheme. world are you talking about? <laughs> I real I thought it was just uh, I thought it was a scam. Yeah. And so uh she said Those of us in finance, we have a high degree of spiritual cynicism, <laughs> which is a good thing. I agree with you. I would have thought we were a scam too. <laughs> yeah. So um so she said you gotta read the book and um so we actually watched the DVDs, um, read the book and we drank the Kool-Aid and um and we've been crazy ever since. All right. I love that you watch DVDs. That's great. Yeah, those that was were five years ago. I mean <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not on VHS, I guess. There we so. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, Jade. I just haven't heard that word in a while. It's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. What happened with your income? It went from 36000 to 88000 What happened there? So I was a stay-at-home mom for uh, 17 years. We have uh, four adult children now, but of course, back then, um, uh, seven years ago or so, they were... They were smaller, um, younger, and um, uh, one of our sons is special needs. Mm -hmm. Um, He's high functioning and he's doing great now, but at the time he couldn't be home, he couldn't be alone. And Mm -hmm. so um, we decided that I wanted to go back to work, um, but we had a unique situation because he can't be home alone. He can go to school, but somebody has to be home Mm -hmm. when he's home and with school schedules and working eight to five, we just... We were looking for an, an option. Um, and so I went back to school, got my degree, uh, went back to school, or went back to work full time. By then, he had um, matured enough that he could be home alone. Oh, good. Um, so he's he's doing great That's now. That's awesome. So um, I went back to work and um, and did lots of side gigs. Love it. Yeah. Bigger <laughs> shovel. And dub- you guys over doubled your income between the yeah. two of you. Yeah. yeah. We sold everything yeah. <laughs> i told the kids if they stood still long enough i would sell them there you go <laughs> i like it i like it wow way to go you guys side gigging is a side gigging is a real it, people don't realize you talk about it but y- there are so many side gigs out there oh yeah um what was the be- one that paid the best for you you think your tail probably well we did <laughs> well I used to, um, when I was in school, I was I was wanting to be out of debt so bad, but I felt so limited because I I didn't feel like I had a marketable degree. We we both graduated from college 25 years ago, but with degrees that were not marketable, and mm. so that's why we had most of this debt, and um, and so I felt so um, I, I didn't feel like I could offer much because I I kind of hopeless. Yeah, I felt hopeless because I I couldn't. We couldn't leave our son, and so, um, so I would be taking the kids to school, and I would it would be trash day, and I would see people's trash on the side of the road, and I said, "Nice trash." Um, I can pick that up, and we started doing that, and we had um, multiple yard sales. We would fill the garage up, and we would pull it all out, and we wow. we sold other people's trash one man's trash another man's treasure oh, it's, mm-hmm. so literally, that was literally. really that was really and that made you the that's your best side gig no that probably wasn't the best probably my best side gig is um i do caregiving on the side mm. i i love that's that yeah. i love taking care of the elderly um i don't go into the nursing homes i just take care of them in their home yeah so that's probably the best and then the other one is probably um i also iron for people on the side i love it interesting (laughs) so you're you literally go pick up their house you're they're close from their house take them to your house iron them and re-deliver them Mm. yes wow (laughs) that's that's a service i might that's uh that's very very apt yeah yeah Yeah. a lot of people it's like cooking they don't know how to do it anymore yeah Yeah. Yeah. 
because we have wow. these things called restaurants that <laughs> ruined the kitchen. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show. Kitchens where we open a box. Where there's a will, there's a way. Ah, uh, way to go, I mean, you guys. picking up trash, ironing people's clothes. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 80000 in five years. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I think that it's when you live according to God's design and you don't try to make life work apart from God I mean, because when you do, you you just get frustrated. Mm-hmm. And God, ha- I mean, God has a design for everything. And he has a di- I mean, so he has a design for money, mm-hmm. you know, and if we just mm-hmm. do it his way, you know, he blesses. Mm-hmm. Amen. You Amen. have to, we've, we've always made tithing a priority. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You have to tithe. You have to, you have to put God first. Cause when you do, God blesses you. You talk mm-hmm. about when, you know, that when you're responsible with your money, yeah. God looks down and God sees yeah. that you're being, re- yeah. and he blesses you. And we have. Yeah. We're stewards of what he gives us yeah. and we ought to be a good steward. And then yep. he just blesses that, you know, and then we're blessable, yep. you know, exactly. and when you're not blessable, you know, you know, you make life work your way, you know, it, it doesn't work. You can go into debt. Amen. Amen. Well done. Well done. Well, certainly the uh, the videos you watched are all biblically based, as you know. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, stuff like get out of debt, the borrower, mm-hmm. slave, the lender. Mm-hmm. There's a principle yeah. right there, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. which you guys did so yeah. fabulously. Now, we did see a video of you on YouTube about like 30 <laughs> like year, years ago. Where, when, 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 like, you had hair, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, that one's been, that one's been going around. I was, yeah, I, uh, it's, lo- it's, it's not real hair, more of a little comb over action. But uh, it was the last vestiges before it gave up the ghost. Yeah, that's, uh, I was like 30-something years yeah. old. Yeah, 32 years old or something. Yeah, it's crazy. It is 30 years old, that video. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, when we first started doing this stuff. All right, guys, way to go. Hey, we got a cop, we got the uh, Live and Give box for you, Baby Steps Thank Millionaire's you. book. That's your next stop and a total money makeover book as well as the financial peace university membership live them or give them all of that way to go very proud of y'all thank you thank congratulations you. Thank you. all right tim and karen from detroit michigan Eighty thousand paid off in five years with their income get this going from 36 to 80 whoop, whoop. don't tell me it can't be done <laughs> no whining making 136 <laughs> after this call jump in count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three two, two one we're, we're debt-free free! yeah <laughs> yeah baby yeah this is the ramsey show If you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Our question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly is your one place to find reliable HVAC, plumbing, 
and electrical providers near you. Brands like AirServe, Mr. Rooter, and Mr. Electric have local professionals ready to help. So stop wasting time scrolling through the pages of results. Visit neighborly.com today. They're great folks. All right. Today's question comes from Terry in Maryland. My husband and I have a HELOC with an adjustable rate. It started at 3.5 last year, and now it's at 8.5%. We owe $57,000, and our current monthly payment is approximately $750. We began paying an extra $500 toward it a month. However, this impacts our lifestyle and ability to do the things that we love, such as travel frequently, as well as other home improvements. Total owed with HELOC and mortgage is about four hundred twenty-nine thousand. Our household income is two hundred seventy-five thousand. Our only other debt is a boat payment that we also make extra monthly payments on. I'm trying to do my best here, Dave. Is it best to continue paying extra on the current HELOC and hope the rates drop, or find a loan with a lower fixed rate, uh, fixed interest rate? which may end up being higher than the adjustable rate in the future. Our goal is to pay this off ASAP, yet the 8% makes this difficult. By the way, my credit score is 800 plus. This is not, be gentle, this is not a long-time listener. No, this is not a long-time listener. Long-time listeners don't close with their credit score. That's a good point. Unless it's zero. Dave... Thank you, Dave, because you you Breathe. gave you gave grace, and Breathe. now I shall I didn't. give grace. I was making fun of him all the way through the whole email, but there <laughs> you go. I'm gonna give you grace. Okay, um, you are a you are a first time listener or a, a, an early listener to us. Um, mm-hmm. You've gotten yourself in a mess. The good news is you've got a great, 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 great income to get yourself out of this mess. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably would not move the HELOC for now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd keep it right where it's at. What I would do if I were you um, is I would start working our plan. You've obviously found us. You trust us enough to write us a letter, right? So I'd start working through this. Um, I live, I want to know more about them, Dave, but I'd try to bust that income down to living on about 100,000 a year. And I'd be taking the majority of it, 175,000 a year paying off this debt. And I'd probably be trying to be debt free in House one year. and all. One year. Pay off the HELOC of 57000 pay off the boat. We don't mm-hmm. know how much the boat is, but pay them both off nope. in one year. For God's sakes, you make 275000 freaking dollars a year. Yeah. Your mortgage could be You're gone in two and a half here. years. Hey, they might not be able to. Listen, I'm, I, listen you, 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 one of the things I had to do was, in order to get out, in order to stop being broke, Mm-hmm was I had to stop the whining. Yeah, that's so real, Because I can so whine to myself about how I work so hard. Mm -hmm. I'm entitled. And my wife would look at me and say, so does everyone. Call the wambulance. I love Sharon. Oh, she's tough. She's great. She's mean. She's hateful and stuff like that. (laughs) No, she's great. Just bust your (laughs) bubble, man. So I had to learn to talk to myself, Terry, so I'm going to talk to you that way. Call the wambulance about your yeah. little travel plans. Yeah. You have a freaking boat you didn't even pay for. There's your travel plan. Mm-hmm. So go out on the boat, since you already have it. That's your travel plan. That's it. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything else. You're not allowed to leave because you have to pay off your debt in one year. 57000 plus the debt minus two seventy five is still a lot of freaking money. No whining allowed. No whining. It's going to go by Clear so fast. Clear this up. Quit trying to figure out a way to interest rate trick yourself into spending more than you make. Congress has tried it for years, and it just doesn't work. Let's talk about the credit score. Okay. Why not? Why not? Because uh, to close with that, oh, and by the way, my credit score is 800 plus. All that indicates to me. All that indicates mathematically is that they possibly plan on using that credit score more in the future. Oh. If you're touting that, that lets me know, okay, this well, matters to you. You want it to be right so that possibly in the future you can use it again. There's only one way to get an 800 credit score. Only one way. What's that, Dave? Borrow a lot of money and pay a lot of interest when you pay it all back. Mm. On time. And that's the only way. This this means you have been playing make out with the bank in the back seat of the car. <laughs> That's what face. the credit score means. Yeah. Okay. 
It means you've been playing kissy face with the bank. That's all it means. It does not mean you have a net worth. It does not mean you have an income. It doesn't mean you have nothing, but you've been kissing the bank all the time. And the bank is a butterface. You know what that is? No. Good. I can't talk about this on the good. video. <laughs> good. Just keep it there. It means everything looks good but their face. Oh, I got you. I got you. So now, the bank, now I understand the, the bank, meaning. The Thank bank you. is hiding the true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they all look good at closing time. Okay. Um, so there we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Just add that so, to your yeah. repertoire. This is getting, it's getting worse. We got to clean this up. We got this a family show. <laughs> all right. So... <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. The point the is, the credit score is 100% derived by your interaction with debt. So bragging about your credit score is like, I love debt. I love debt. I love debt. That's why Jade is saying she thinks you're going to go back in debt again. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do the stuff we teach, which is designed to get you into wealth and peace as fast as possible, the shortest right way, then what you'd have to do is uh, get yourself out of debt and limit your lifestyle to do that. And so this is about growing up. Mm -hmm. It's about adulting. Children do what feels good. Adults devise a plan and follow it. So don't be playing kissy face with the bank anymore. You're not going to borrow your way out of this. You're going to pay your way out of it. Thank God you have a fabulous household income. Fabulous. And you don't have a lot of debt. But you do have a lot of symptoms of somebody who's getting ready to make a huge mess. That's right. I mean, we just heard a debt-free scream. Making 36000 They paid off 80000 making 36000 Yeah. And it took five years of sacrifice. You've got maybe 12 months. N well, maybe. Not that, yeah, we don't know how big the boat is. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's still, that's it's, true. We don't know how big the boat is. <sighs> but at least the There we go. There we go. That's it. Uh, the... Uh, that segment will go down in infamy. <laughs> Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jessica is in Georgia. Jessica, how can we help right quick? Hi. Yes, thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, I've been a long, long-time listener. Actually, ever since I was a kid, we uh, would listen to you on the radio. Oh, thanks. And, um, yeah, yeah. So we really, my parents would even be like, okay, after that episode, what did you learn? So, <laughs> um, yeah, really, by really talk radio. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just excited that I actually have something. I really love your advice on. Um, we've been really just diligently praying and trying to steward our finances well. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, $300,000 in cash in the bank, mm -hmm. and we are trying to decide, do we invest this money into the market since the market is low and go. You know, statistically it should increase in the Good next couple of years, or should we buy a house in cash? Now, you've been um, listening so to the show have, since you were a little bitty baby girl. I, I have and you actually, know the answer to this question. I, I actually have some very early memories. You completely know the voice. answer to this question. <laughs> I know, like I you know, completely so know the answer. Voices, like, do I buy a house in cash? You know the answer. Option. You know uh, the answer. So many different. What's the answer, Jessica? Is to buy the house in cash. All ding, right, ding 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 ding, 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 ding. You get the prize. <laughs> Is it painful? Does it feel? Yes. You know what I, happened yeah, is you I got some idiot friends that haven't got three hundred thousand, but they do have an opinion. Yes. Thank ah, you. ding 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 ding. Yeah. And don't take so financial much, advice from like, your oh, broke friends. <laughs> don't yeah, take financial advice from your broke friends, and don't take financial advice from TikTok unless it's okay. one of our in one of our accounts. But other than that, you should <laughs> yes, ignore all caveat. TikTok advice. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all short-term thinking. It's all brought up by adolescence yeah and so long-term thinking pay cash for your house take what would have been a house payment and go get rich with it Ooh, very that's quickly exciting very quickly she's young to have a paid for house oh, just, i don't know where they got the 300 grand i don't but, either oh my god that's incredible beautiful beautiful well done well done hey call terry in maryland and tell her how to do this this <laughs> is the ramsey show Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today.
Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Jay Washaw. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Helen is in Atlanta. Hi, Helen. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, um, everyone else. Um, I'm calling. Um, I forgot your name. I'm sorry. It's That's okay. all right. Um, okay. But I have I have a question that I'm sure y'all hear a lot. It's a student loan question. I know y'all are like, oh, I'm so sick of student loan. Not no, me. We're, 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 we know you're sick of them, so we're here to help you. What's mm-hmm. up? So I, I'm kind of like in a very deep hole. I'm at the point where I'm very hopeless at this point. I'm trying to figure out how can I handle my student loan debt, which is now at $311,000, which keeps um, growing as each day goes by. My interest rate on that student loan, which is $311,000, is um, some of them are 7%, some are 6.80, and some are 7.60. Are they private? Um, all of them. Are they private or public? They are not private. They're, they're, they're public. All of them with the Department of Education. Okay. Um, What's your degree in? I am. So I have three degrees. I have one in um, information technology, one in um, conflict management, which that was a waste of money. Um, and um, I had a law degree. Hmm. Okay. And so what do you make? Um, so right now I'm only making 85K. Doing what? Um, right now I'm doing compliance. Okay. Why? Um, uh, because, well, I was um, a staff attorney. Um, but I wasn't making a lot of money as a staff attorney because I worked for a nonprofit. Um, I wanted to switch over um, to do more corporate um, type of legal work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when I switched over last year um, to to this to try to try something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and which I did get a pay bump in making this transfer. Um, I am married. I have a child. Um, what does your husband, husband make? Doesn't make he only makes 50. Okay. How old is your information technology degree? I was years old. Okay. Um, so you're not up to you're say, not up to snuff on what's going on right now then. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. So your best path to it's an income is through your law ago. degree. Exactly. Okay. Can I ask about the your spouse? He makes 50k. You're yeah. not combining your income? Um no, we are not because well why not? We're not really combining our income because he says my student loan is my student loan. Mm. So he's not contributing to that. Does he have debt? Um, he he owes about, he has a, um, there was a garnishment or whatever. It's not garnishing, but um, he has a debt about 30, well, more than that. He has a $30,000 um, debt, plus he has a car loan. I do not have a car loan. The only debt I have is the house. Hmm. So the house is in your name. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We we got troubles, girlfriend. We have a lot of troubles. And <laughs> the house, basically, if you add the house and you add the student loan debt, I'm at half a million dollars in debt yeah. at this point. Yeah. That's... Um, All right. so, that- so number one chance, you've, the only chance you've got to cleaning up his mess and cleaning up your mess is for you guys to join forces and quit acting like your roommates mm-hmm. fighting over whose mayonnaise it is in the dadgum refrigerator. Besides that, boy child is no money genius. We've proven that already. So it's not like he's sitting over here on some high horse. He's already behind. He's further in debt ratio to his income than you are mm-hmm. and his income potential. Mm-hmm. So anyway, number one... Uh, we need an attitude adjustment in our marriage and learn to get on the same page and work towards things together. Um, and then number two, we're going to have to do something with your law degree that makes you as much money as possible. And it's not what you're doing now. I mean, a law, a law degree, you ought to be North of six figures. What was coming out of the gate? What was the intent when you got that degree? What was the intent? Just collecting degrees like a thermometer. Um, my intent was I always wanted to be an attorney, um, but but end up except for the part when you did conflict management and the part when you did um, yeah information systems. Yeah, I mean, what's the next step? Yeah. Taking the bar? 
You got the bar. She's already I've, already t- I've already taken the bar. Yeah. So, Your staff attorney. So then what, I, I need to understand what's stopping you from. Making double what you're yeah. making. Because the industry is not paying. Well, I'm not going to, I don't want to litigate. Um, that's one thing. I do not want to litigate. Why? Um, so I have to, because I, I've done it for three years and I hated it. Okay. I'm sorry, you, 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 you did it for depression. 30 years. I did it for three years. Oh, three years. Three years. years. Three as a staff years. Okay. <laughs> and I hated it. And I was like in depression. Mm. The only, the only option that I saw out of this situation is to work for a nonprofit, which you know, that's not going to make that much money at all. Doesn't work. You and need to make some money. Give in 10 years. Yeah. You guys both need to make as much money as you can possibly make because you have a deep, deep hole and a medium size to small shovel. And we need to get the size of your shovel up, your income up. And some of the jobs well, that you do. Here, here, if you could, hear if me you out. could make $100,000 more a year, you could be out of this debt in three years. Yeah. Even if you didn't like what you were doing, like litigation for three whole years. If you made if you made $185,000, we'll go do it for three years and exactly. shut up. Exactly. Because it's less depressing dealing with litigation than it is dealing with $311,000 in student loan debt. And that's the mic drop. That's that's Hello? all. Yeah. Is this on? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here. I'm not sure it's litigation. I don't care. To- but you're hiding in these stupid but half paying corporate jobs while you need to go at the tip of the spear and go make some dead gum money for the good of your life. Because you're looking at a mountain, don't know how I'm going to climb it, and you're standing there with a law degree in your hand. So you, it's an income issue. Mm-hmm. You can make it out at 85, but it's going to take you three or four times longer. You can make it out without your husband's participation, but it's going to take you three or four times longer. Right. And oh, by the way, when you do finally get out, dumb butt's going to still be in debt over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. W- what we're telling you, the, the you part of it is just such a small part of this equation, because if you're getting up your income, think about think about this. If you double your income, he doubles his income. You guys attack this thing together. You're you'll moving be, quickly and you're on the same page and you and have you're the same be wealthy. goals. You'd be wealthy. Well, You'll end up wealthy he, at the end of the story. Can't, he can't double his income because he doesn't have any of the education behind him, as well as he's not motivated. It d- well, well that, that's, that's, that's the, the problem. second part, not yeah. the first part. The problem is he's not motivated because I don't care if he doubles his income in his field. I just want him to go out working and bringing in more income. I don't care if he's delivering pizzas. I want him to get after this because you guys together decide that this is what you need to do it's emotionally debilitating to be doing it by yourself when you're married so it's very hard but you guys it is an income to debt ratio problem mathematically get your income up so that you can attack this faster and faster and faster and faster and look at it as a temporary thing it doesn't have to be a career choice it's a temporary thing you need to do something and go make an extra 100k a year this is the ramsey show Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. She shall forever be known as everyone else. <laughs> Dave and everyone else. And everyone else. It's like that, a band. It's like the, my co-host, everyone else. <laughs> that's good. We got a lot of input that way. That's right. <laughs> Lots of input. Lots Joshua of people. Joshua <laughs> is in Orlando. Hey, Joshua, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Well, a lot of big life changes have happened to me recently. Uh, last December, I graduated with my aerospace engineering degree. Wow. And I recently Ooh. got an entry-level engineering position at NASA, uh, making 70000 a year. Cool. He is a I, rocket scientist. Okay. 
I also just got married last week, um, and my wife uh, makes 40000 a year. And we are about to finish Baby Step 2. Um, we've been doing it for about four months. And crazy enough, we have paid off $40,000 in debt by selling my fancy truck and everything else. Way to go. <laughs> um, my question is, my wife and I have always had this dream of owning like 15, 20 acres of land, uh, having cattle, goats, chickens, having a bunch of kids. Um, and if you were in my shoes, how would you go about doing this? We would love to build a house, um, but we know in the past you said that's not really optimal um, for first-time home buyers. Uh, we were even thinking about just buying the land, you know, putting an RV on the land for a year or two, and then slowly building a house. Just what are your thoughts on all this, and how would you go about doing this? Okay. Um, so you got married when? Last week. <laughs> <laughs> So we always have wanted, yeah, for a week. Um, yeah. Please tell me you're not on your honeymoon right yeah. now. Okay. No, we're not. So, congratulations, by the way. A lot of wonderful things. So you're what, 23, 24? Uh, 27. I was in uh, school for eight years, mm -hmm. um, changed major once, and okay. then I had to drop out. Due and how to old is she? Stuff, but came back. She is 26. Okay. All right. Um, we have done a lot of sacrificial things in our lives been married 41 years to hit our goals uh never once was one of them my wife considered that she would live in an rv for one of my goals <laughs> that never that was never one of the possibilities um like not a freaking chance okay i'm just saying <laughs> so we rent an apartment first or something i don't know so uh i could be wrong but that might you guys really want a piece of land, and I think that's wonderful. I like dirt, too. I've got some dirt myself. and um, uh, But, uh, yeah, the living in the RV thing, and, uh, unless she's a, uh, an unusual lady, that's probably not her dream. That might be your... Well, it was actually her idea, believe it or not, and I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But okay. uh, An unusual lady. Well, I just you know, don't believe it. But, okay. I mean, I didn't believe it till you said it, so I believe I believe what you say. But, all right. Um it, uh, what would I do? I don't know what you'll do because you're willing to do things I'm not willing to do. And my wife is not willing to do, namely living in an RV. Okay. And so, uh, at any stage of our life, no matter how sacrificial we've been or how broke we've been, that never was on the list. So, uh, uh, I mean, we've lived in some dumpy one bedroom apartments to get there, but never did do that. Not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying, not something that Sharon's going to do. So anyway, all that to say, we would buy a nice starter home that is very generic because generic homes is not unusual. In other words, uh, they go up in value more uh, likely than weird homes. And um, then we would get that thing and we pay it down as fast as we could pay it down. Somewhere along in there, we'd save up some money and pay cash for the land. Uh, we'd sell the house. Uh, and we'd rent while we built on the land. And that mm -hmm. would be the two-step procedure that we would do. And it's we did that, but we did it over a number of years. Uh, I wouldn't think it's going to take you guys that long. But, I mean, your first place, it just feels uh, like bad relational advice for me to tell you, as Dave Ramsey, that your first home after you've been married a week should be an RV. Well, there's there's a fairy tale element to this it's like we just got married this is our dream to have this land and this house with lots of kids and um i oh, love i would all live that. under a bridge for you yeah until i'm under the bridge <laughs> well there's i i want them to have all that but i i agree Not with you dave because <laughs> because at least if you go somewhere you get a small starter house first or you know whatever that is at least it has the ability to, to appreciate some value over time yeah, while you're saving yeah, yeah. we know that rv is not going to do that that's a good point you know good so there's point. that piece of it and then either way there's going to be some time that you're going to wait here because you've got to buy the land so you may as well wait in a house in a home yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I, w I would just buy something very boring kind of yeah and very make that boring. your first home and concentrate on uh, your first year of marriage. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a scripture in the Old Testament that talks about in First Samuel that the warriors in the in, in Israel in the time of Samuel 
uh, were not allowed to go to war their first year mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of, yeah. of marriage. They were required to invest in their marriage for the first year. So, um, and at times, I've built uh, several homes with my wife over the years, and at times it's it's sim- similar to war. <laughs> so, <laughs> I see where you're going with this. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> no, I mean, the last the last couple have been pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the first one, we about killed each other. But the... Uh, um, yeah, and the decorator. I almost had the decorator assassinated, <laughs> but I found out that was illegal. So um, yeah, you can't do that, Dave. But the um, yeah, so you, that's you, you. It's really getting to know each other and spending your energy on the project of relationship building instead of the project of home building. That's so and true. That's that's just good. Uh, first year of marriage. Try to try to take on as few complicated and large projects as possible i agree in the first year um there's enough to deal with just your mother-in-law i mean there's just that and so (laughs) you are correct or her mother-in-law or i don't know your mother i don't i mean whatever you know i don't know it's something it could be a mother it could be a father you could have an overbearing controlling father like my kids and so (laughs) you know that that could happen but yeah i mean you got to learn to deal with it and i you, you can do all of that joshua but you're a you're you're a very precise minded individual and um I suspect uh the project of building a home will be very precise for you. Oh yeah. And uh so I really want you to precisely and I if you were my son I would tell you to not do anything for a year. Yeah. Just like you heard me say before. And if you did do something it would be a boring little starter house and then let's make the building on the land the step to That's second right. home. Second home. And it's gonna it's still gonna be fun. Yeah. The whole process oh, is gonna be fun. You've got time. You, you guys time. are yeah, it's plenty gonna be time. fun. And you know, word of the wise, goats aren't as fun as they sound like they are. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Now I will get hate mail from the goat people. But um there we go. <laughs> hey, I hadn't offended as many people today, so I thought it'd just you know, add to the you list. Did, you and did all right. That's the process. So it, it's a good thing. Like I talked to a couple, uh, I, I remember, gosh, many years ago on the show, and it was the first time I ran into this. They were worth about $2 million, mm-hmm. and they did what he's talking about. Got the I, land, was, got I was the kind of in awe of them. And that what they did, they bought a, a $5,000 single wide, extremely used trailer and stuck it on a piece of land. Mm-hmm. And lived there until they saved up three hundred thousand dollars cash, and then they built a cash house. That's and, pretty cool. And fast forward, we're sitting with them. They're not even thirty, and they're worth over a million dollars with a paid for cool. three hundred thousand dollars house on a nice track of land. Mm-hmm. They were down in, in the Alabama area at the time, and that was the first time I heard somebody going that extreme. And they're like, "You're gonna love this," and I'm like, "Yeah, I love that you did it." Yeah. And, uh, but I'm, no, Sharon was not going to do that. That was not on her list. And I don't, it's not wrong. There is a level of sacrifice that you're going to endure. Mm-hmm. The depth of it will, the deeper, the faster you're propelled, but the depth of it is your choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And the fact that they did a $5,000 RV. It was a single wide. Yeah. yeah. Worse. This is the Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. George and Carol are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Fine of you, Dave. Better We're doing than, great. Better uh, than we deserve. Same here. Same here. <laughs> Welcome. Where do you live? San Antonio, Texas. All right. Fun. How much debt have you paid off? Paid off $620,000. woo <laughs> How long did that take? It took us 39 months. 30? Wow. Yeah, I've got it. Well, this is a lot. That's a lot. And your range of income during that uh, three years and three months? Uh, we started out at uh, 313000 and ended at 348000 Goodness gracious. What do you all do for a living? Uh, 
I'm a retired soldier, 30 years Army, mm -hmm. retired, uh, medically retired. Mm -hmm. And uh, 25 years retired Air Force. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's the, this is all retirement income? No. A and also, well, I retired in uh, 2010, and they picked me up as doing the same thing. I, re I get in individuals deployed. Ah, that is okay. my job. I, civil service. Oh, okay. All right. So all of that combined. Wow. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for your service. Both of your career then. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. And San Antonio, definitely. That makes sense. Okay. Very cool. Whoa. So 620,000. Uh, that's your house? Cool yes, house. sir. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, weird people. <laughs> you are debt free, baby. Debt -free. Yeah. I love it. What's this house worth? Uh, a million dollars now <laughs> wow come on somebody <laughs> i love it and you got this fabulous military retirement thank you thank you thank you for your service mm -hmm. over and over and over again and uh you got other nest egg built yes sir how much so we have over seven hundred thousand dollars in okay. retirement wow. we have um so you're worth around two million dollars then. yes sir <laughs> wow 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 because of you uh, no, because I didn't of you. do any of it. You, I didn't you do any of it. You helped us tighten the shot group. Man. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's something. Yeah. Put those rounds down range in the right direction. I like it. I have to be transparent <laughs> with you, Dave, because at first I did not want to do it. I was totally. Yeah, but she might it. tighten the shot group, so you need to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a lady you want to mess with, I can tell. <laughs> so, how did she get you to do it other than threatening you with a shot group? Well, believe it or not, uh, I have to give it to uh, two couples. Uh, a Jazz and Chris Brown and Leonard and Pam Turner. Uh -huh. uh, Jazz and Chris Brown, they came to our house and taught us FPU for nine weeks. Wow. One-on-one -on -one because I was totally against it. Whoa. Force-fed you. Dedication. Force -fed, yes. And once we got aboard, I was hook, line, and sinker. Okay. So how many weeks into you being force-fed did it turn into – you were the you, you, you were gang on gun, game on. I say on the third week. Okay, wow. when I had to cut those credit cards. Out. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, what kind of friend does that? That's a friend. That sure yeah. is. We were in the same life group. We had a IRS debt. We were married eight years ago. Today's our anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary! When we were married, we didn't join our income. Mm -hmm. So we were just living paycheck to paycheck. When the bills came in. We paid him. He paid his bills. I paid my bills. But 39 months ago, we had, well, it was four years ago, we had an IRS debt over $11,000. Mm -hmm. And so I said, hey, baby, slow down on the spending because we owed IRS $11,000. And about a week after that, I was at home and a pallet of mulch was dropped off at the house. And I called him up and asked him how much it was he paid over seven hundred dollars for this mulch, and we still owe the IRS. And I lost <laughs> my mind. <laughs> that and that was my I've had it yes, moment. Yes, it was. And here comes the force feeding. Yeah, <laughs> that was my I had a moment. At the time, I was volunteering at the homeless shelter, and every story was the same with the women. Um, husband died, or husband used up the entire nest egg, and. You look up, and now she's homeless, and that wow. wasn't going to be me. Mm -hmm. I see it in my family. I saw it with my grandmother. She died with debt. I see it with my mother, who's a widow, who's in dire need of money without mm. an nest egg. I did not want that to be me. You've you got to love it that it's a— Saw uh, all of that in the mulch. A pile yes. of yes. mulch, yes. so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that, that, yeah, that pile of manure will get your attention. It sure will. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Now, that I remember fabulous. you guys. I met you guys on a coordinator rally, right? Yes. yes. So how did that transformation happen to where someone's force feeding you FPU? Now you're doing and it. And now you're doing it. Um, we had a, again Chris and Brad, uh, Jasmine Brown. They were teaching the course in our church. So my wife was like, "Hey, we want to do that as well." Mm -hmm. So we joined them. Um, did a co-host mm -hmm. guest with them. Mm -hmm. And after that, we we're like, "Hey, we need to do one of our own." I love it. Wow. So, what church you go to? Now uh, we're at Covenant Church in San Antonio, okay. Texas. Well, thanks for teaching it. We appreciate it very, very much. Our church is also dead free in this. I love it. I love it. You guys are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, 
What do you tell people now that you're coordinating? You pay off 620000 in three years and some change. Oh, my gosh. House and everything worth $2 million, retired military. You're living the American dream. Man. Tell them how to become debt-free. What would you do for that three years? We joined forces. Mm -hmm. We got on a budget. Mm -hmm. And we tightened up our shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Everything else was secondary to that. We mm -hmm. stayed gazelle intensity through the whole thing. We did not give up. <clears throat> and uh, so what we do now is if I see someone, like say a plumber or electrician come to the house, mm -hmm. I'll say, hey, uh, how's your finances? And they'll talk to us a little bit. And then I'll go in, I'll grab one of your books, mm -hmm. and I'll pass it to them and say, hey, um, you might want to read this. <laughs> and so, wow. So we're trying something. to give it back. Yeah. That's something. The Lord didn't give us all these resources to expend it all. That's right. Because yeah, we give that glory to God because if it wasn't for him, we would not be standing here at this time. No, that's, that's true. That's true for sure. Well done, you guys. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. You're heroes in so many ways. Beautifully, beautifully done. How's it feel to have no payments in the world? Outstanding. Free. Peace. Yeah. No we're not. We're not in flight or fight mode yeah. anymore. Yes. Yeah, no, no homeless shelter because of uh, a pallet of... <laughs> the, the BS. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in a position to help others, the widows, the orphans, the yeah. single parents, yeah. the right. homeless, clothe, feed. We're allowed to focus on um, our ministries. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You guys are beautiful. You're fabulous. I love it. I love it. Amazing. I love it. Well, we've got the uh, live and give box for you. It sounds like you've got good use for it. The yes. Baby Steps Millionaires book, which you're living proof that that happens. You are Baby Steps Millionaires. And the Total Money Makeover book as well. And then another Financial Peace University membership. You'll find a good use for that. I'm sure for someone coming into one of your classes that, that maybe that helps them get started. So very well done. You guys are amazing. George and Carol, San Antonio, Texas. Wow. 620000 paid off. House and everything, landing them in a $2 million net worth. Making 30, did that in 39 months, making 313 to 348 Love military it. retirement plus continuing to work. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt, debt free. free! Yeah! Woo! Oh, oh! Love it! Wow. I love it. Goals. So, yeah. Hashtag goals. All the years of doing this, I have never heard Titan the Shot Group in, re in reference to that. I've heard it when I'm on the shooting range, but I've never heard it in reference to that. Look, she, so, Carol, yeah, Carol is not group. messing around. Titan the Shot Group. She, she, she does not miss. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be downrange. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, what a great target. What a great job. Heroes, man. Very cool. Hey, you know, you're out there right now, and you're 19 or you're 20 years old. Uh, you're starting your military career. Did you listen to that, young man, young woman? Did you listen to that? Unbelievable. That's where those people are. And they did that serve in their country. Mm -hmm. So beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. Very well done. Wow. Ding, 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 ding. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. 
Henry Ford said, most people spend more time and energy going around the problems than trying to solve them. Dr. Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits, used to talk about uh, the tree beater. That if you sit, you know, uh, one lumberjack goes in with an axe and he's knocking down, I don't know, make it up 20 trees a day. Uh And the next day, 20 trees a day. The next day, 20 trees a day. The other guy comes in, he's doing 20, 25 trees a day. Then he's doing 15 trees a day, then 10 trees a day. Mm. Finally, he goes over to the guy who's const- consistently doing it. And he said, what are you doing? He said, well, every morning I have to sharpen my axe. And you keep a sharp axe, the trees go down. Yeah, You know, easy. you keep, keep sharp. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success, Ecclesiastes says. There you go. Good word. Must have been where he got that. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Annie is with us in San Francisco. Hi, Annie. How are you? Hi, I'm great. It's so nice to talk to you. You too. What's up? Um, all of a sudden, I got very nervous. So <laughs> That's okay. We've never um, lost a patient. How can we help? Good to, good to hear. Well, I'm trying to figure out if we should keep our earthquake insurance, yes. and I would love your advice. Yes. We okay. live in San Francisco. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we are. So we are not in San Francisco. We are in a suburb of San Francisco. Doesn't matter. And we specifically. Okay. I mean, you're in an earthquake um, zone. We are, but it's what I cannot figure out is why we are. We seem to be the only chumps in our 1.8 million dollar house because all the houses here are insanely priced. We seem to be the only ones who have kept our earthquake insurance. I have talked to so many of my neighbors and our friends in this town. Nobody else seems to have purchased it or kept it once our our premiums went way up. Well, if they went high enough, um, I don't know what they are. I I guess I should have asked that. Um, I don't know what the how how high they are, but I mean, there there are people that buy earthquake insurance in Tennessee. That's humorous. Yeah. Because there's not been an earthquake well, I don't in Tennessee. Them because it's probably, but it's probably super cheap. Ours, for the longest time, ours was about two thousand a year, and in the last couple of years, our premiums gone up to six thousand a year. So it's more expensive than yeah. our home. I mean, by far. So what would insurance. I mean? I, again, I, all insurance is probabilities. It's all statistics that establishes price. Okay. Right. And so what they're trying to determine, like, for instance, it's, it's very difficult to get homeowners insurance of any kind in Florida now because of hurricanes, right? because right. the, the insurance right. companies have right. abandoned the state because of that. Um, one of the well, problems you guys are facing in California too. is a lot of the insurance companies have abandoned the state because your state government are idiots and the regulations are crazy. And so, uh, they've driven businesses out that that they don't want to, they don't want to write in California because it's just too difficult mm-hmm. with the regulations. So I that may be what's driving this up. It could be, but it could be just statistics that okay, if we're a more if we're an insurance company and we're going to cover a thousand million dollar houses, million eight hundred thousand dollar houses, what'd you say yours was, then um and on average out of a thousand of them, how much are going to have earthquake damage in a 10 year period of time, you know, then, Mm -hmm. okay, that's 60,000 bucks. And so the, you know, they're running the statistics down, Mm -hmm. uh, or 600,000 bucks. They're running the stats down on actually that they actually make money on all insurance. If they do their statistics, right. All insurance makes money, but some of it's worth not worth. Some of it's not worth the risk on our part. So we take it. Right. But so what's your household income? our household income, it depends on the year, but it's between three hundred and fifty and four hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. And so if if you if the house uh I mean what you gotta think about is just the probability uh what is the chances of a total destruction of this house while you live there. I mean, there have been severe earthquakes in the last what, hundred years in San Francisco, right? Two hundred years oh, yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Right. And it'll happen again, for sure. Yeah. I, I, and, and for that reason, actually, all of the insurers don't actually insure for earthquake in California. Right. We all have to get it if we want it through the California Earthquake Authority, which is like a public, you know, it's like a private. Public. And that's the $6,000. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Mm. So like our State Farm home insurance, they, well, they, they carve won't ride out it. earthquake. They don't. Ah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. they couldn't figure so, out the they couldn't figure out the probabilities on it. I I have a right. I have a question. In my mind, yeah. and, and I could be totally wrong. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, one point eight million dollars. This is going to cost me five hundred bucks a month. I feel like I would just do it for the probability of living where there's so, such a pro- some some sort of damage, even if it's not catastrophic. Right. With your income, right. and I know the ratios you know, are different in San Francisco, but I'm thinking with your income, yeah. how big of a piece? How big a piece of five hundred dollars? of your world is $500 a month. It's not because it makes, you're making it's 300 not, grand. It's not. It you just didn't nice want to feel like a chump. You know, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, <laughs> no yeah, yeah, no one wants to be like, a chump. I mean, that I do. I feel like a chump because all of these other people who have incomes, you know, either around ours or north of ours, you know, they don't seem to have it. And but so if well, there's an they're, earthquake, they're going to be the chump. But <laughs> Yeah. I mean, but it, it's a matter, it's just a matter of probabilities. What do you, chan- I mean, in in the how long are you going to live in this house? You know I'm going to live there ten years. Yeah. What's the chances of a of a total loss in that ten year period of time? No one knows, obviously, but that's how you would decide if you're a chump. And so it doesn't make you a chump. It's uh, to buy it, or for that matter, not to buy it. They have mm-hmm. chosen the other people to become self insured. Mm-hmm. They're taking the risk themselves. Obviously, you're already aware of that. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I've got a friend that ha- has a house. Um, on the beach in uh, Mexico. Okay. They, Mm -hmm. the area that he's in has small, uh, tropical storms and occasional small hurricanes. The house is almost Mm -hmm. totally concrete because it's built for that area. And so if a hurricane comes through there, it's going to like blast his furniture, blast the windows out, but the rest of the house will be Mm -hmm. just fine. And, um, he priced hurricane insurance down there and it was ridiculous. I mean, it was like Mm -hmm. $25,000 a year. And he's like, nah, Mm -hmm. I'll just self insure it. And he's got plenty of money. He can re- if the whole stinking thing blows down, he can he build can it back, it. Yeah. right? But he's just like, I'm. I'm just gonna, you know, I, I'm gonna put hurricane shutters on it. I'm gonna take care of the house, and you know, he was describing it all to me. It made sense. It made sense that he's taking the risk, but he can take the risk. So if you if the house fell down, do you have a mortgage on it? We have about three hundred and seventy five thousand left on it. Yeah. I was and what, ask, what's your net worth? I was just about to ask. Um. Depending on which way the wind blows, we're between five point three and five point seven. So this is not; it doesn't mm-hmm. ruin your life. This if is the house falls. This down. is just a peace <laughs> argument. Do you, is it giving you peace or is it not giving you peace? It, will having it make you sleep better at night? Will not having it make it, it make gives, you sleep better at night? Oh, that's a good question, Jade. It gives me peace. Okay. Then you're um, not a chump. It also makes me feel like I'm a chump. You're not a chump. I'm the only one who thinks I, I will mathematically <laughs> tell you you're not a chump. You freaking live in San Francisco. Earthquakes yeah. occur. Okay, you're not a chump. Okay. You're not. You're not getting messed over. If you told me sixty thousand a year, I'd be going. You're getting yeah. messed over. But six thousand? No, you're not. Uh, it did go way okay. up, but the reason it went way up is the more the uh, in, insurance companies got hammered. Mm-hmm. By California yeah, yeah. claims on earthquake. That's why they quit writing it. And then the only way to get it is get it through a socialized thing with the state, a public private right. mm-hmm. socialism. And so, yeah, that's the only way you can get it. And that's part of what, that's the only way you can get dead gum insurance in Florida right now. Just about, there's just a few companies writing it. Very difficult. Mm-hmm. And so um, uh, it's the exact same thing. It's the probability of the event becomes hard to predict. So the insurance companies aren't going to cover it. Yeah. So I don't. I mean, I know a lot about actuarial tables, and I don't think you're a chump. But I don't think you'd be a chump if you self-insured it either. It's not a, you're not, you're not measurably dumb either way. (laughs) It's just no fun writing a $500 check every month to something that is very fluid. (laughs) That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.